Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. CES is shaping up to be an incredible event with tons of amazing announcements from AMD, Intel, and of course, NVIDIA. And in this video, I want to focus on the latter, with NVIDIA's Blackwell lineup receiving a number of additional leaks over the past the day or so that I really want to tell you guys about, because quite frankly, there's actually some really good news regarding the specifications of both the 5090 as well as the RTX 5070 Ti. And we're going to get into all of that, plus some more stuff after this very quick message from the video sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So I won't go through the whole spiel, but everyone at this point does know that NVIDIA are almost certainly going to be announcing the RTX 50 series of graphics cards at CES, which are going to be taking place on the 6th of January. NVIDIA themselves have almost confirmed it at this point on social media, and of course the entire industry is really hyped. While NVIDIA won't be uh, releasing GPUs which are going to be competing with the low to mid range at least initially of course those cars will come out later next year i think it's fair to say that for those who want to plonk down a lot of cash and let's face it the 5090 is probably not going to be just the price of chewing gum you're going to have a really good time but um, basically speaking there have been a couple of interesting updates concerning both of the aforementioned cards that's the 5070 ti as well as the 5090 we'll start out with the 5070 ti first because wccf tech have managed to basically confirm some additional specifications of the gpu of course i will leave a link to their article in the description of the video so first of all uh, they have a really handy dandy comparison table on their website now obviously all of these specifications are preliminary right now don't you just love that word um but uh, yes yeah, so it's based on gb203-300 and while G uh, gb203 i'm just going to call it 203 for the rest of this video so i don't go insane uh features 84 sm for its full design this cuts things down just a shade down to 70. however um that's still not awful, I guess, but the really interesting thing is that we now have confirmation, quote-unquote, that we are indeed looking at 16 gigabytes of memory. Now, I believe that this has been rumoured, but now WCCF Tech have basically confirmed that this is indeed the case. It's going to be using a 256-bit GDDR6 memory interface, sorry, GDDR7 memory interface, and the memory will be running a little slower then i'm sorry i'm laughing just a little bit because we've got a new cat and it's kind of peeking into the room and it's not sure whether it wants to come in so that's why i'm chuckling don't worry um and uh, so yes the memory is running at 28 gbps which is just a little bit slower than the um 58 <laughs> apparently yes the cat is coming into the room um i might include a photo or something hang on Okay, I managed to grab a photo of it exiting the room. Anyway, so like I said, we're, we're, very, <laughs> we're being very professional on this channel, so we'll continue. So that's a 256-bit GDDR7 memory interface running at 28 Gbps, which is a little slower than the 32 Gbps that the 5080 is going to be uh, running at. So this is a card, of course, that has been long rumoured, and allegedly it will be also announced at CES but the TDP is going to be 350 watts, which is not exactly sipping power, but it's not too bad, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. However, uh, we also have a small update to the RTX 5090. So you may recall that the RTX 5090 has had various configurations at this point in terms of all of its specifications, not least of which the TDP. And there were a lot of early reports that we would see the cards running at low 500 watts, and then Copperheight 7 Kimmy and a couple of other folks as well all said that the 
latest information seems to be that NVIDIA were aiming at 600 watts. Now, interestingly, Copperlite 7 is stating that this figure may be slightly revised to launch, and um, he hasn't given a figure quite yet. So back in July of this year, I believe it was around the 15th, I actually released a video where I said that I'd been hearing that the configuration was 460, 490, and finally 550 watts for the power. Um, that uh, NVIDIA were basically playing around with internally with different BIOSes. However, at that point, A, the power consumption figures had not been 100% locked in, and also this was really early stuff, and even the number of SM and the memory bus and everything else was just changing, so obviously that was really preliminary as well. It does seem, however, that based on what Copperite 7 is saying, I'll try to do more digging myself, or perhaps I'll leak more uh, you know, solid figures once things have been finalized. Um, it may be like 580, 560, or maybe even 550. I will, however, point out that even if you go back to the 4090 and maybe even the 3090 launch, there have been a lot of figures banded around even back then regarding the power consumption figures of the um, of those top-end cards. I think the 4090 was like, also, at, I can't remember if it's 550 or 600 watts someone correct me in the comments below and of course what the final retail cards would default to is 450 watts uh, some models would allow you to actually overclock more and put more voltage through uh, sorry uh, raise the tdp uh, or you could also do like a bios flash and stuff like that uh, with pretty much any card but that obviously you know <laughs> let's just say it's not exactly uh, in <laughs> it's not really in the uh, spirit of the warranty but um, you can do that um, but to be honest with you guys, at least in my personal experience doing that, uh, you do get higher performance. Obviously, the clock frequencies do go up, but it's not exactly a one-to-one -one ratio in terms of performance. But you guys can do some Googling on that if you're really interested in it. So it's going to be very interesting to see what NVIDIA figure out to be the sweet spot for the RTX uh, 5090 card. And again, just to remind you that this is 170 SM out of 192. So... Um, it's also using still the 512-bit bus, which is good. The memory speed is actually the same now as the 5070 Ti. So basically, the 5080 has the fastest memory speed, at least so far out of all of the models. But even so, this should be really impressive. They do have the listing here at 600 watts, but again, Copperlite 7 is saying that maybe these figures have been slightly reduced. So I guess we'll wait and see. So there is also one other story that I do want to mention just really briefly, and this actually concerns... AMD and Intel. Now, it is important to realize that uh, obviously lots of these stories kind of exist at one point or another. A lot of rumors of mergers and acquisitions, not just in terms of technology, but also just in the gaming industry right now, things are just kind of going bonkers. But basically, Lisa Su, who was, of course, the head honcho over at AMD, recently was sitting down for an interview. And long story short, of course, I will leave a link to this in the video description, but uh, there were a lot of things that were being discussed, like AI, the direction of the company going forward, and they also talked about Intel and essentially the fact that obviously Intel right now has gone through a lot of stuff you know there's a lot of products that got cancelled a lot of upending in terms of people leaving the company not le least of which of course Pat Gelsinger recently um, however there was a rumor being tackled by her that uh, Intel and AMD could actually do some type of merger and basically she shot down the rumor I don't honestly I haven't heard anything like this myself, so I can't comment on this with any degree of, like, you know, authority in terms of what I've personally heard. Um, I'll try to do some digging, but this is the kind of stuff where it's really hard to hear anything solid. And yeah, quite frankly, again, these rumors just go around everywhere. And even just talking about game, like, studios, for example, game studio acquisitions, you might hear, like, something like, and this is just an example, Capcom are being or considering being acquired by let's just say microsoft or sony or konami are being purchased by nintendo again i'm just making up random examples here and the thing is those conversations do happen internally quite frequently in other words you might get someone at microsoft just as an example say hey if we were to be able to purchase this company what would that look like as in, like, what would it do to boost our, bolster our portfolio? What would it do to bolster our position in the market? What would that look like in terms of regulation? Would that even slightly have a prayer of going through? Would they even consider 
being purchased you know all of those conversations and these are things that just kind of happen you know it, it, sometimes there are literally no conversations that go through other than yeah, it'd be kind of cool you can almost think of it as like pipe dream conversations as in like you know kind of yeah wouldn't that be cool but nothing really comes of it on the other hand sometimes obviously there is something more to it but lisa here is stating that no this is just not happening um, she also said that this is not something that the current Biden administration wants to do. Obviously, things could happen in the future with the whole change of presidency that's going to be happening in the US. I would be very interested, though, if this happens in some ways. But in another way, I don't kind of want it to happen because I am pretty much of the mindset that competition in the PC space is already pretty limited. Uh, obviously, the x86 arena is really, I mean... I guess outside of x86 there could be some benefits but uh for the pc customers maybe but for like cpu like and i think this has happened a couple of times like do you remember back in the day for example when you had intel essentially ruling the roost with uh, like sandy bridge and ivy bridge haswell skylake and then amd started to do the reverse and it was just like well if you want x you always go with Intel, or if you want, you know, and then later on, X became AMD. And I don't think that's necessarily good for the customer, because I think when you've got, like, two companies that are really duking it out, it just means that innovation and things start to move forward a lot faster. I mean, hell, this is one of the reasons, complacency, that is, that Intel have gotten themselves into the situation they have. I don't really have anything more to add to this. I just want to bring this rumor to your attention. I would probably park this under the it is not happening, um, category but as always just kind of keep it in the back of your mind with that said take care of yourselves guys stay safe bye for now